a man strolls through the courtyard of a decrepit and dangerous prison. He has had a rough time in this prison and he is finding it increasingly difficult to survive. He picks up a rake and begins his detail for the day, clearing the leaves that had built up throughout the prison. Whilst the man was completing this task, his eyes were transfixed on a shed nearby. It was an old rusted shed, barely managing to stay intact. Not much was known about what was in the shed, but that it had various signs warning people not to enter and it was padlocked shut. Why was this shed so interesting to this inmate? Because just six feet from the shed was a wall. Just over that wall was freedom. This was a notorious spot in the prison as it was the only part that was not blocked out by barbed wire. But there was always a prison guard nearby. But this inmate has been biding his time. He glanced at the guard on duty and noticed that he had fallen asleep at his post. This was his moment, his opportunity to escape the horrors which he had endured up until this point. He ran up to the shed and proceeded to climb it, making as little noise as he possibly could. Out of breath, he looked behind and saw the guard still sleeping. Now on the roof, he knew he would need a decent run up in order to make the six foot jump out of the prison. He built up all the courage he had and started sprinting. He was sure he would make it. He reached the end of the shed and proceeded to put extra weight on his foot to prepare for his massive jump when the shed's roof caved in. The prison inmate crash landed on the mysterious shed's floor. What he saw next would haunt him forever. He suddenly realized what this old shed was holding this entire time. A man is led to his cell on his first day of a 20 year sentence. Angry and emotional, the man looks back on how he ended up in such a terrible predicament. Drinking alone in a bar, he is drowning his sorrows. Yet another business venture has gone belly up and he is not sure where his next paycheck is going to come from. Soon thereafter, a cheerful and jovial man approaches him. He quickly realizes he recognizes this person as a friend of a friend. They get to talking and the lone drinker explains his latest business failure and the other man tells him of a polar opposite story. He explains he just came back from South America delivering some unique merchandise. He delivered some high-end religious statues to a company and they pay good money. The man in the Hawaiian shirt offers the job to the lone drinker and the drinker, down on his luck and affected by alcohol, accepts. Before he knew it, he was driving down to South America, but his trip was over as soon as it began. Police pulled him over, inspected his vehicle and it turned out that all the religious statues were filled with drugs, heroin. With no paper trail, the man is charged for the crime alone. He meets trouble early in his stay at the prison. One of the most notorious prisoners is heard walking down the cell block, talking about the new prisoner. He's talking a lot. He's saying some very threatening things as he approaches his cell. He comes right up to the man's jail cell and starts threatening him directly. He says the next time they're in the courtyard together, it will be all over for him. He's going to stab him repeatedly until his heart stops beating. The man, terrified, knew that one way or another, 
he had to find a way out of this prison, even if it means escaping. And so he plotted his escape, waiting for the perfect moment to jump from the shed's roof over the wall and to freedom. But there was one thing he didn't count on, the shed's roof not holding his weight. He lay on the floor of this old shed and dark, creepy figures begin to approach him. Unsure of if these figures were safe, he proceeded to have a look around the rest of the shed. He saw many men, clearly out of their minds. They would defecate and urinate wherever they pleased, and it was not a pleasant sight. He quickly realized this was a place for the criminally insane. The dark figures continued to approach him. Soon, once the adrenaline no longer had a hold of the inmate's body, pain started to kick in. He had injured himself on his fall. As the terrifying and insane figures approached him, he passed out. He wakes up in his cell, on his bed. Before he could decipher what just went down, his jail cell opened up. He was free to go. It turns out that back home, the friend of a friend that put him in this predicament was caught by the police and confessed to being the ringleader of the smuggling attempt and that the man arrested knew completely nothing about it. This information got sent to the prison and the man was released. Now, suddenly on the other side of the fence, the man was free. He was deported back home to continue his life, putting this chapter behind him. The man is fortunate to have escaped these events alive. Threats were made and he was trapped in a locked up shed with insane criminals. He assumes that the police officer heard him fall through the roof and came to investigate, then took him away. The thing that the man is scared of the most is what did these insane criminals do to him during the period that he was passed out and then eventually taken back to his cell. It's likely he'll never know.